Welcome to part 3 of the Queensland Education Science Technician webinar on hazardous chemical registers in schools. In this presentation I will walk you through creating a hazardous chemical register using Microsoft Excel 2013. As mentioned in part 2, the tools I will be using are also available in the 2010 version of Excel, but they may be located in a different toolbar ribbon. If you are having trouble locating a tool in your version of Excel, use the help function to search for its location as shown in the start of part 2. According to the Model Work Health and Safety Regulations, a hazardous chemical register must include a list of hazardous chemicals used, handled and stored, and the current safety data sheet for each hazardous chemical listed. These are the document examples provided by DEEP for their employees. You will notice that the registers have similar headings to each other and more information than legally required. The extra information is recommended as it assists in documenting compliance with legislation in managing hazardous chemicals. Be aware that some guidelines and exemplars provided in Part 1 of this webinar have not been updated to the new Global Harmonised System or GHS requirements. GHS hazard classes should be used in place of dangerous good classes and categories as per the placard and manifest requirements under the Model Work Health and Safety Regulations. The sample registers that were provided to you with the webinar script have been developed to suit my workplace needs. You'll notice that the headers contained in the documents are the same. This is for convenience when updating the data. It means that I can move any chemical information from one sheet to the other and it'll all be the same. I don't have to worry about going and checking whether I've missed anything. So you don't actually require all this information. Um, it's just something that I've developed for my convenience. Your hazardous chemical register could be as basic as this, just the hazardous chemical name and the SDS date. However, how do you know if um, you're over the limit in a particular GHS hazard class for having a chemical manifest or placarding? How do you know if you've met the other workplace health and safety requirements for risk assessing hazardous chemicals in the workplace? Where are the chemicals stored? What vendor or supplier SDS do you need in order to look up the SDS when it expires? For these reasons, the information recommended by DEET in their sample register is useful to include. As per the chemical manifest, DEET employees have access to an electronic version of this form and you may choose to use that rather than developing your own. Taking all this information into account, your register may have grown to look like this. You'll notice that it now has the UN number, like our chemical manifest, the vendor name, so that we know what SDS we need to have appropriate to the stock we have, the GHS category, which will help us to segregate our chemicals, the storage location, the largest quantity we have in store, just like our chemical manifest, SDS date, so we know when to update our SDSs, and likewise a risk assessment date. For the exercise of this webinar, these are the column titles we will use. Your workplace policy and administration may have other mandatory in-house requirements and you should take these into consideration when compiling a hazardous chemical register for your work site. The hazardous chemical register must be stored with the SDS, either electronically or in a hard copy, and it must be in a location near to where the chemicals are used, and it must also be accessible to all staff who have access to these chemicals. For further information, you should refer to the Model Work Health and Safety Regulations, which are available through the WorkSafe Australia website. Our workplace stores the hazardous chemical register in a filing cabinet, and that's located in an area accessible to staff and students, along with a full copy of each chemical SDS arranged in alphabetical order. A duplicate of all this information is kept in the school administration building and um, ring binders instead of a filing cabinet. I'll now walk you through creating a hazardous chemical register using an existing list of chemicals in an Excel spreadsheet. I will demonstrate this using the spreadsheet that we created in part 2. If you have a chemical stock book already saved in an Excel file, you can apply the same principles and use it to create your hazardous chemical register. The instructions for using Excel to create a hazardous chemical register can be found in the webinar script. You may like to have Excel open whilst you view the webinar, and remember you can pause the webinar presentation at any time. 
just opened up the chemical register that we created in part two of this webinar. What we're going to do is copy the chemical manifest sheet and change that into a hazardous chemical register. So we'll go down to the chemical manifest sheet tab at the bottom, right click on that to bring up the quick access menu, select move or copy. Now when we move or copy, um, we can actually copy it to a completely new workbook and if you like to keep your registers separate you could do that here. I'm going to show you how to do it on the one register. So we're going to create a copy. Check this box here. If we don't do that it's just going to move the sheet. It won't create a copy. We want it to move it to the end. Press OK. So now you'll see it's created a second spreadsheet that's identical to the first except it's put a number two at the end. So we don't get confused with the two, we're going to rename it now. So right click, rename, and call it Hazardous Chemical Register. For 2010 users, you have a limited number of character spaces that you can use, so you may need to abbreviate like I have. Next we're going to modify our table header so that we have all the columns that we want in our hazardous chemical register. To do this, hover your mouse over the letter where you wish to insert the column, left click on your mouse, right click anywhere in the highlighted area and select insert. It will automatically insert a column to the same width as the column to the left of it. We're going to use this to put the word vendor now you don't have to use the word vendor, I'm using it because ChemWatch will search for a vendor name, but the legislation actually requires that the supplier supplies us with a current SDS for the chemical. Next we're going to insert another two columns to the right of the spreadsheet. We're going to insert them so that we don't have to reformat our title. So type in SDS date and risk assessment date. You'll notice that you'll need to resize the column for risk assessment date or you can wrap your text cell. So, and move the column down. You'll notice that you've lost your grid lines. You can easily pop those in by selecting the area just like we did in part two. And putting a border around it. Before we add the extra information onto our worksheet, we're going to sort our data on the GHS category. We want to delete those chemicals that aren't classified as hazardous. So we're going to do this the same as in part two. Select the entire worksheet, go to data, sort, you may need to click this, check this box here that says My Data Has Headers. Sort by GHS Category on Values A to Z. So they're now nicely grouped for us. Scroll down until you get to the category of nil or non-hazardous, depending on what you've called it. Left click on the top row of the group. Scroll down using your mouse until you find the bottom one. Hold down your shift key and left click on the bottom row and you'll have selected all the rows consecutively. Right click anywhere in that highlighted area and select delete. And of course now our data is no longer in chemical name order so we'll put it back in our chemical name order exactly the same as we just did. And we're ready to add our extra data. Now something that I find really annoying when I'm working on my data sheets is that as you scroll down you lose your header row and when you're in a big document you can't tell what information you're supposed to be adding where. So I'm going to show you how to freeze the pane so that your header row always appears and your chemical name always appears. So select the cell directly to the right of um, the chemical name 
and under the header row. Then go to the View tab, select Freeze Panes, and you'll notice this icon here. This cell is the one that we want to select, and these ones at the top and to the left of it will stay frozen. So now when we scroll, it stays at the top. And if we scroll down the bottom, across, it, our chemical name will stay as well. If you want to unfreeze, there are some functions you can't do if you have your panes frozen. You just go back to view, freeze panes, unfreeze panes. In part two, I showed you how to set a custom header footer. I just want to show you what's happened now that we've copied an extra sheet into the workbook. So go to Page Layout, Page Setup, Extend the menu, select the header footer, and you'll notice that now instead of Chemical Manifest, we have HasChem Register. And that's because we chose to use this function and tab, which inserted the sheet name. If you wanted to insert the file name instead and you renamed your file, the same thing would happen. It would automatically change. Remember to keep saving your work as you go um, using that shortcut key, Control S. We've come to the end of the presentation. I really hope this webinar has assisted you in creating a usable document for maintaining your records. And I hope I've taught you a few extra things about Excel that you didn't know before either. Thank you for listening.